Okay guys, this is Jay Harris with Infinity Box. And in this video, I want to go through the details of our master cell. Specifically, I want to talk about how it works, how it connects to the Infinity Box system, and how you wire your switches to the master cell. And in my mind, this is the most important video of the entire series because this is what sets our system apart from any other electrical system in the market. We've talked about our 20 circuit kit, and the 20 circuit kit is our core universal wiring harness that you'd use to wire any car. It includes the master cell, which is our brain, and two of our power cells, which are the muscle. And again, the power cells take commands from the master cell. So when you look at the master cell, there's a couple important things. First off, it is completely sealed, and the connectors we use are OEM grade sealed connectors. This port on the top is the master cell A connector. Every kit comes with an A connector, and that's your inputs 1 through 24, or switches 1 through 24. The bottom port is the master cell B input harness. And not every kit has that, so check your configuration sheet. But this would be for inputs 25 through 48. And then the CAN connector, or our controller area network, plugs into this port right here. And that's what connects the master cell to the rest of the Infinity Box system. Under the clear cover here is an LCD screen. And that screen visually, and in English, tells you everything that's going on in the Infinity Box system. And below that, there are a series of buttons that let you manipulate the menus on the screen. So we talked before about the controller area network. That is essentially the two-wire connection that connects the master cell to all the other cells. The power cells, the emotion cells, the environment cell, whatever it is, it gets commands from the master cell. But now here's the most important part. The master cell connects to your switches. So whether it's a brake pedal switch, your headlight switch, an ignition switch, or even a cooling fan or a fuel pump trigger from your ECU, all of those switches wire here to the master cell. Now in a traditional wiring harness, you bring power to the switch. When you close the switch, power flows through it. So when you close the two contacts, Power flows through the switch, and that goes to your headlight, or your fuel pump, or your brake light. And that's how cars have been wired since day one. Now, in some cases, when the load that you're controlling draws more current than the switch can handle, you have to have a relay. So power to the switch. When the switch closes, it energizes the coil of a relay. That relay closes and lets more current flow out to, let's say, a big cooling fan or a large fuel pump. But in every case, you've got power to the switch, which is a wire that has to be fused and protected. And you've got power flowing from the switch, either directly to a load or to the load through a relay. And every one of those switches has to have a discrete wire coming from the battery and a discrete wire going to what you're switching. Now, the master cell works completely differently. The master cell works by getting switched to ground. And a lot of guys struggle with this, but once you get through this, this first concept, it makes everything so much easier. So instead of bringing power to the switch, I take a wire from the master cell, connect that to one of the terminals on the switch, and then I ground the other side of the switch. I can either ground that locally to the chassis right there at the switch, or our master cell harness has ground wires built into it that you can use to bring up to the switch to make the wiring easier. So when I turn on the switch or I close the contacts, I'm connecting the master cell input to ground. The master cell sees that and then reacts and sends commands out to the rest of the Infinity Box network. And here are the really important things about this. First off, it takes about a milliamp of current. So that's one thousandth of an amp to turn on a master cell input. So that means that there's absolutely no power at the switch. And that means that we can use a very light gauge of wire. And this is actually the master cell A input harness that comes with the kit. And this looks really complicated, but it's actually really simple when you get down to it. There's the mating connector that plugs into the master cell. There are the 24 inputs that connect the master cell. And there's eight ground wires that you can use as a reference. But when you look at this harness, all of the input wires are 22 gauge, which is a very light and very thin wire. That means that there's no bulk of wire back behind the harness. You can take a lot of the weight and a lot of the complexity by using these small 22 gauge wires. The other thing that's really important is since there is no power at the switch, 
you don't have to have a switch that can carry a lot of current. So either I can keep the original switches that came with the car, maybe 30 or 50 years old, and never have to worry about the contacts of those switches eroding over time as I open and close them because there's no power at the switch. That also means that I can use any switch that I want. So if I want to use a very simple and very elegant billet button switch, I can do that. If I want to use a little small toggle switch or a small micro switch, I can do that. You are not limited by the size of the switch that you can put in your car to turn things on and off. So again, so let's talk about a few specific examples. Let's talk about your brake lights. So on your brake pedal, there's a switch, and that switch has two terminals. When you step on the brake pedal, inside the switch, you're connecting those two terminals. So I'm going to ground one of the terminals of, the, of that switch, and I can either ground it directly to the chassis, or I could use one of the black ground wires in the master cell input harness. And then I'm gonna to go to my configuration sheet, and there's a completely separate video talking about the configuration sheet, and find the master cell input by wire color for my brake lights. And I'm going to collect, connect that master cell input to the other terminal on the brake pedal switch. That goes to the master cell, and then you also then have the power cell in the rear of the car that you have wired my brake lights to that power cell output. So when I step on the brake pedal, I'm closing the contacts of the switch, which means I am grounding this master cell input. The master cell sees that input being grounded and knows, because it's the specific input, that that's the brake lights. And so the master cell sends a command to the power cell in the back of the car to turn the brake lights on or turn the brake lights off. So that's about the most simple example of how to wire an input to the master cell. But when you look at every other switch in the car, here's the best rule of thumb to use. Where power came into that switch originally, when you wire it with the infinity box system, you're gonna connect that switch to ground. So for example, your ignition switch has a terminal for B, which is the battery, ignition or IGN, ST, which is the starter, in a lot of cases, ACC, which is accessory. The way that switch was originally wired in your car, B connected directly to the battery. In this case, you're gonna connect that B terminal or that battery terminal to ground, either directly to the chassis or using one of the ground wires in this harness. And then you're gonna connect the master cell input wires for the ignition to the IGN terminal and the starter to the ST terminal. So instead of when you key it to the ignition position, instead of the switch providing power, the switch is going to connect the ignition terminal to the B terminal, which is now ground. That grounds the master cell input and it knows to turn the ignition on. Same thing for the starter, same thing for the accessory. So you're running a lot less power in the car, and in the case of that switch, you're just grounding what was the battery terminal. So you're taking a lot of wire and you're making things much simpler. Our website is full of specific wiring diagrams that show you how to wire specific switches and specific functions in the car. So check the link in our description below, and that'll take you to our blog and the wiring section of our website. So I hope this got the point across how simple it is to wire a switch to our Infinity Box Master Cell. If you have more questions, give our team a call. You can get us at 847-232-1991, or check us out the web at www.infinitybox.com. If you like these videos, please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified for when we post more. Thanks for watching.